Good morning. How are you guys? Um, we are on chapter four of Junie B. Jones has a peep in her pocket. Yesterday we read chapter three, which was called Pictures, and it was called Pictures because because um, Junie B. and everyone else in her kindergarten class were asked to draw a picture of some farm animals um, that they expected to see on their field trip to the farm. And Junie B. drew a picture, can you remember what it was? Of a rooster who got crushed by a tree. So, very creative picture drawing in that classroom. Um, chapter four is called Cockle Doodly Doo. And I wonder why it's going to be called Cockley Doodly Doo. I know that Junie B. is not looking forward to seeing the roosters because they're going. she's afraid they're going to peck her head into a nub. So maybe she actually sees a rooster in this chapter. That's my prediction. We shall see. So chapter four, cockle doodle doo. Cockle doodly doo, sorry. On Saturday, mother came into my room. She said we were going shopping for clothes for the farm trip. I looked up from my coloring book. No, thank you, I said, on account of I am getting a fever that day, so I won't actually be going to the farm. Mother laughed. Don't be silly, she said, and then she picked me up, and she carried me out to the car. Yeah, only here's the problem. You are not ex respecting my wishes, I said. Mother laughed some more. <laughs> I promise, this will be fun. I did a huffy breath. <sighs> Whatever, I said. Whatever is the grown-up word, for that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And guess what? I was right. Shopping was not fun at all because mother kept on making me try on clothes that I didn't want. First, she made me try on a shirt with checkery squares, and then she made me try on overalls with big giant pockets. Plus, she tied a bandana around my neck, and she put a straw hat on my head. I looked at myself in the mirror. What do you know? I'm a cornball, I said. Only too bad for me, because mother said I looked cute as a button. And she bought those clothes anyway. Plus, also, she bought me a throwaway camera at the drugstore. You know, this outfit right here reminds me, um, especially the way she was describing it with the checkery sleeves and the bandana, reminds me of the picture on the front. So that's what that looks like in color. And since the author and illustrator decided to put this on the cover of the book, I bet that's the outfit she actually wears to the farm. So after we got home, I started to color again. Mother hanged up my new clothes. Do you want me to show you how to use the camera for your trip now? She asked. No, thank you, I said. On account of I'm getting a fever that day, so I won't actually be going to the farm. And after that, Mother did a big sigh, and she closed my door, and she let me color in peace. I got tricked, because on the day of the trip, I told Mother I had a fever, but that woman did not even take my word for it. Instead, she took my temperature. And so what kind of trust is that, I ask you? No fever, she said. Then Mother dressed me in my farm clothes, and she drove me right to my school. We pulled into the parking lot. Oh, no, I said. Oh, no, oh, no, because the bus was there for the field trip already. It was parked right at the curb. Believe me, Junie B, she said, you're going to have a great day. Then she got me out of the car and she pulled me to my teacher. Good morning, Junie B, said Mrs. Don't you look cute today? I felt my forehead. I'm ill, I said. Mrs. smiled. I love your straw hat. My head is a flaming fireball, I said. Mrs. bended down next to me. And that bandana is absolutely darling. I am burning to a crinkle, I told her. Crisp, said Mother. Whatever, I said. After that, Mother lifted me onto the bus, and she handed me my backpack with my lunch and camera. She waved goodbye to me. I did not wave back, because my hand did not feel friendly. Just then, my bestest friend named Grace came running to get me. Junie B, Junie B, Lucille and I saved you a seat. And then she grabbed my arm and she took me way in the back. I sat down next to Lucille. No, said that Grace. That's my seat, Junie B. She quick pulled me up. So where am I supposed to sit then, I asked. Lucille pointed across the aisle. 
right there, silly. She said, you're sitting directly across from Grace and me. Um, and so it's almost like we're sitting together, except you will be separate. I sat down. But there's no one to talk to over here, I told her. Just then, that meanie Jim jumped up from the seat behind me. Me! You can talk to me! He said, very laughing. Then he leaned into my ear and he hollered, cockle doodly doo And he yelled it right into my eardrum. Too bad you're afraid of roosters, he said. Roosters can tell if you're afraid, Junie B. Ask anybody. Roosters always peck the scaredy heads first. No, they do not, Jim, I said back. You are making that up, probably. And anyhow, if roosters pecked people's heads off, all farmers would have nub heads. Only they don't. So there. Ha! Jim raised up one eyebrow. Are you sure all farmers don't have nub heads? He said, kind of spooky. Hmm? Are you? He did a grin. Why do you think farmers wear hats? Jim leaned closer. To cover up their nubs, that's why, he whispered. After that, he lifted my hat up and he patted my head and he cockled doodly dude all over again. And that's the end of chapter four. So I guess Junie B, to check my prediction, didn't actually see a real rooster. Meanie Jim was the one who was saying cockle doodly doo. So, Join me again tomorrow for chapter five.